In this video, we're going to talk about hip pain, hip bursitis, hip arthritis, and hip impingement, and how to choose a good chair for you so that your hips don't hurt more and more every single day. And we're going to talk about simple tips that you can use to make sure that your hip pain doesn't get worse from sitting all damn day. So if you're ready, let's get ready to think right, move right, and feel right. I used to have constant chronic hip pain every single day. I couldn't even sit in a car for more than a couple of minutes without my hips just aching and burning and there was always snapping and popping and all kinds of discomfort on a daily basis. So I know the struggles of sitting and feeling like your hips hurt and in fact, I can still get tons of hip pain if I don't do the right things to keep my hips and my body happy. But that doesn't mean I'm permanently horribly broken. It's actually a normal function of the human body and we're gonna talk about that later in this video. I got an email from Lauren, who's a student of the FAIFX program, and she said, a normal desk chair gives me about 45 minutes comfortably, more since I've been doing the FAIFX program. I found your review of the Core 360 chair, and I was also considering a kneeling chair. I wanted to see what has worked best for people with FAI joint issues. So if you have hip impingement or hip arthritis or hip bursitis, I want you to remember this. A. T. M. Always think muscles. It's so important to remember that the deformities that orthopedic doctors look at have no correlation to actual symptoms. You can have really bad hip arthritis and have no symptoms of anything. Hip impingement bone shapes and hip labral tears have no correlation to actual symptoms. That means you can have those things and no hip pain and that's true whether you're a teenager or you are a senior aged athlete. Large scale studies have shown no correlation between these things and actual pain. So stop worrying about them and think about the thing that you can actually control, which is your muscles. So in short, don't define yourself by the diagnosis that you have because the diagnosis doesn't provide a path towards resolution. Unless you want to get a surgery with a less than 50% success rate, there's a study on that too. I'll link to it in the description box. So now let's talk about the chairs. There's no such thing as a perfect chair, whether you have hip arthritis, hip labral tears, hip bursitis, hip impingement, or whatever. There are many different kinds of chairs and the defining factor of any chair that you get is that it's going to have you in a hip flexed position. Now, yes, there is allegedly okay research that says being at a 135 degree angle with your uh, hip joint is a little bit better for you than being in a 90 degree angle. But the reality is there is no magic angle that is going to keep your hips happy all day because it's not actually the angle that makes the difference. Whether I'm sitting up higher with a more open hip angle or I'm sitting down lower with a more closed hip angle, there's one thing that's totally the same the whole time and that's that my butt and my hamstrings are getting crushed underneath the weight of my upper body. And look, I can even switch chairs. I can use this other cool chair that lets me move around. I could use a very regular, normal office chair and sit here. But no matter what chair I use, I'm still crushing my butt and my hamstrings in this position. And when you are constantly crushing those muscles, you're actually killing them. Imagine I just had my arm like this and I decided to leave a weight on top of my forearm muscles for, I don't know, 12 hours a day. What do you think would happen to the muscles in my forearm and my hands and fingers? Do you think that those muscles would stay healthy and happy? What if I made myself a little tourniquet and cut off the blood supply to my fingers and to my forearm? Do you think the muscles there would stay healthy and happy? Do you think that the sensations in my forearm and fingers would stay normal? Or do you think I would start to get painful warning signals from everything here? Do you think I would be comfortable where I'm getting that pressure, where I'm choking off the blood? Or do you think I would be uncomfortable and feel a lot of pain and discomfort all around this pressure point? And then when I took this thing off, how do you think I would feel? Let's say I was only doing this for uh, 10, 12, 14 hours a day, but then I let myself take that off and go to sleep. Do you think I would still have normal function of my elbow joint? Would I have normal function of my fingers and forearm just because I gave myself a little bit of time off from that constant choking off of blood? The answer is no. If you have hip pain, you need to abandon this notion that you're gonna find a perfect magical chair that costs $2,000 that's gonna make sitting all day long feel really comfortable for your hips. Such a chair doesn't exist. Actually, if you'll pay me $10,000, I can build that chair for you. But here are a couple ideas that can help you sit for longer periods of time, whether you are using a cheap Ikea chair, you're using a more expensive chair, or a mid-range chair, or you're just sitting on something like this. Why are you sitting on this? 
So let's say you're sitting on something really firm because somebody once told you that sitting on a firm surface helps you feel your sit bones so that you can sit in a nice, straight, tall position with good posture. That's actually true. You can feel your sit bones a lot better on a firmer surface. But guess what? When you're sitting on something firm, what happens to the muscles you're crushing? The muscles that you're crushing are getting crushed worse because you have two hard things smashing them. So blood supply is cut off and the muscles are not super happy. I actually personally spent a long time sitting on a really firm wooden bench thinking it was going to be better for my posture because some teachers told me it would. Unfortunately, it made my hips way worse and way weaker and my hip pain got really bad. That's why I now prefer to sit on something that has a little bit of cushion. So if you're on a firm surface, it'll be a good idea to have a little cushion so you're not crushing your butt muscles quite so aggressively. But does this mean you should buy a super cushy expensive chair? To address that, let me tell you about a really expensive chair I had years ago. It was probably an eight or $900 chair that somebody gave to me. He was actually an ergonomic furniture salesman and he had all kinds of back and hip pain because his body was all twisted from sitting in front of a computer even though he was sitting in his ergonomic equipment. That chair was pretty cushy in the seat and it would let you just lean back and stay back. In fact, it encouraged you to lean way back and stay back and was a real pain in the butt to use because you really couldn't just stay sitting up unless you did what I did, which was to basically lock the mechanism so you couldn't lean back and then put a big cushion behind you to try to help keep you upright. Without those hacks, you were just constantly leaning back like this and good luck feeling good when you're trying to use the mouse and keyboard like this. So the moral of that story is spending more money for a cushier chair can be a big waste of money. Yes, this is gonna take away some of that pressure you feel in your butt and it will crush your butt a little bit less, but I've observed that sitting in really cushy seats like your couch or sofa will end up hurting your hips and or your lower back pretty bad anyway. Unfortunately, I can't tell you what level of firmness is gonna be perfect for you. You probably don't weigh exactly the same amount I do. Your body's probably built a little bit differently than mine, so you just need to experiment with different levels of cushioning on different chairs and see what works for you. One idea you can use that's pretty inexpensive is a yoga ball. Those are actually nice and bouncy and you can keep moving and they're relatively inexpensive. But again, they're not perfect because even if you're sitting on a yoga ball, you're still stuck in this hip flex position and the muscles around your hips need some different stimulus than just being stuck in this hip flex position all day. And no, it's not a perfect solution to just get a big yoga ball and bounce around like this all day. Although now that I think about it, it's a not bad idea. But I've never tried it. If you end up trying it, let me know how it goes in the comments section down below. You may have seen my previous videos where I review the Core 360 aerial chairs and I do like them, but these are not super cushy chairs. And in fact, for me personally, they're a little too firm. The first version of this actually is way too firm for my butt and my legs and my butt will start to complain if I'm sitting for longer than 30 minutes. This newer version is more cushy and is much more comfortable than this one, but it doesn't move quite the same way as this. Now you might be wondering, why are you talking about moving? That's a really good question. So I'm gonna sit on the Ariel 1.0 and I'm gonna show you just how much movement I can get. It's kind of like sitting on a surfboard in the water. I can kind of shift it around front, back, side to side. I can do a little dance. And if I shift over to the 2.0, you'll see that I can shift around side to side pretty well, but the front back, meaning anterior, posterior tilt, is actually quite a bit more limited. In some ways I like this, in some ways I don't. I definitely like that the cushioning here is much better than on the 1.0. And the folks at Core360 also sent me their more budget-friendly version, which is a stool without all the crazy fancy things going on there that isn't as quickly adjustable, but is still good. And this one moves a lot more like the first version. But again, the padding isn't quite as cushy as I'd like it, and my feet and legs will complain when I have crushed my butt for too long. And yes, my butt will also complain. But when I sit on this, I can move around a lot. And I like that because moving into different positions and shifting my body around is what my body wants. It's what your body wants. Your body needs to be moving. It needs to have challenge in order for it to feel good. So this little bit of movement can help the spine feel better. It can help the shoulders feel better. It can help the hips feel better. It can help your legs feel better. But there are limitations because again, no matter how much I move, what's under me is still my butt. And 
and my butt is still getting crushed. If you take nothing else away from this video, I want you to remember this, your body needs movement. If you are just sitting all day long, your body's not gonna be happy, your hips won't be happy, your spine, your shoulders, all of that will deteriorate, you will atrophy. If your muscles are not being used, if they're not being worked in different positions with different levels of resistance, your muscles will atrophy and atrophy aches. The more atrophy you get, the more you're subject to IE, which is atrophy-induced immobility. If your muscles are not strong enough to move and position your bones in the ways that you need them to, you won't be able to move into those positions. Your muscles are the organs of movement. Your bones don't go anywhere unless your muscles are able to move them there. If there's some kind of resistance, you have to have the strength in the muscles to get the bones to move into the position. By sitting all day, whether it's on a cheap chair, a fancy chair, or whatever chair, your butt muscles, your hip muscles, are learning to atrophy in one specific configuration, which is this. So now let's talk about three things you can do to keep your hips happier so you don't experience hip pain while you're sitting. Number one is to take some stretch breaks throughout the day. And I know this can be difficult because it's difficult for me when I'm really locked in and doing something on the computer, but getting up and doing some kind of stretch to open things up again is a great idea. Your hip flexors are generally gonna be in a shortened position while you're sitting all day. Your butt muscles are gonna be crushed. Your hamstrings are gonna be shortened. So putting your foot up and getting a nice little stretch in for your hammies, your hip flexors, your inner thighs, all that stuff is gonna be really helpful. The number two tip is to do some activation exercises for the muscles that are getting crushed. So if your butt is constantly getting crushed, then doing something like this can be really nice. Waking up those butt and hamstring muscles. You can do things like hamstring curls if you stick a little ankle weight on there, or if you have really weak hamstrings, this alone with just the weight of your foot and leg can be enough to wake some stuff up. And if you're in the office, it may not be feasible to get down on the floor and do bridges or anything like that, but you can be standing and doing a little bit of glute activation work like this to help wake that muscle up. You could also do some hinges by holding onto your chair or some other piece of furniture and work on lengthening and strengthening your hamstrings through a nice full range of motion. And if you're somebody who's really motivated, you can grab some weight and hold on to the weight while you do that so that the hamstrings are actually really being forced to work against some resistance. The key is to find a level of difficulty that is tolerable but is at least reasonably challenging for you so that those muscles actually learn to get stronger while being longer. And the third tip is to change positions throughout the day. So that might mean getting a sit-stand desk so you can actually stand up and open up your hip angle here. That might mean kneeling down on the floor and working with your computer here like this. It might mean sitting on the floor and working on a little table like this. This desk smells like butt. And there's a final part to Lauren's email that I wanna talk about. She says, I have fibromyalgia and wanted some advice on people with hip impingement and fibromyalgia. I've had a few bad days since starting the program and just curious if any others get flare-ups from too much uh, tissue work, stretching, and reactivation work. Thanks so much. This gives us a chance to revisit the idea of ATM, always think muscles. Yes, if you've been given the fibromyalgia diagnosis, it means that some of your muscles feel tight and achy all over the place, and it makes your existence really feel like a drag sometimes. Yes, if you've been given the hip impingement diagnosis, your hips probably hurt, and you might have some sort of anatomical variation that doctors claim is the cause of your problem. But no, neither one of these diagnostic names provides any sort of useful strategy for you to get better. Though I was never given the fibromyalgia diagnosis, I fit a lot of the diagnostic criteria, including having trigger points all up and down my spine and into my butt and feeling like my life was falling apart because I was in pain every day. The thing is fibromyalgia is a syndrome, which means it doesn't really have any clear causes. It doesn't really even have clear treatments that the medical world thinks are particularly effective. The best you can do is take a bunch of painkillers and hope that that helps you get through the day. But over the last few years, I've seen a lot more people with the fibromyalgia diagnosis or, or those symptoms noticing, just like I did, that exercise makes a huge difference. 
This makes a strong case for the argument that fibromyalgia is actually just the way you end up feeling, the way your muscles end up feeling when you are allowing them to atrophy and not giving them the amount of work and challenge that you have evolved to need. In other words, fibromyalgia might just be a mismatched disease, which is basically when the environment you live in doesn't match what your body actually needs to feel good. If you were a fish living in air, you would suffer from the mismatched disease of chronic water deprivation, which would kill you pretty fast. If you're a whale living in captivity in a small tank, then your fin starts to get floppy and you suffer from this floppy dorsal fin disease because the environment you're in is no longer challenging your body the way it's supposed to. Modern human life, where we get to just sit around, click on things, and have everything come to us, is a very new development in human history. For the rest of human history, we have been animals that needed to walk a lot, that needed to squat to poo, that needed to walk several miles a day to get water, to get food, to find food, to climb up things, to acquire food, to hunt, to kill, to wrestle. Did I mention squatting to poo? The point is human bodies have always been used in a variety of ways on a daily basis and put into all kinds of different positions and challenges regularly. It was rare for a human being to just sit locked in the same position for 16, 18 hours a day. A healthy, happy human body is one that is in motion, that is moving, that is being challenged, and is being encouraged to grow. That's why hunter-gatherer societies that are still around still have old senior citizens who are still climbing trees, gathering tubers, helping on hunts, etc., etc. But in modern human societies, we see our senior citizens getting weaker and weaker as they sit on couches all day long, enjoying their golden years. And I use the term enjoying loosely. In the same way, hip impingement can be viewed as a mismatched disease because when you are sitting all day long in this hip flex position or a slightly less hip flex position, you are not giving your hip muscles what they need to feel healthy and happy. Instead, you are creating atrophy and imbalance all over your hips. And the doctors who don't even think about muscle function just scan straight for your bone and say, oh, that little bony thing, that must be the problem, even though the surgeries to fix that bony thing don't work. But at least they generate a lot of revenue for hospitals, device manufacturers, and insurance companies. So if you've spent decades allowing your body to atrophy and all these things to start aching, then when you start challenging those muscles in new ways, it is to be expected that your body is going to complain. It's going to say, oh, we are stiff, because you are literally starting from zero. If you were to lie in bed for an entire year, your body would start hurting in that first month from atrophy and just from lack of movement. If at the end of the year you were like, you know, this wasn't such a good idea, I'm gonna get out of bed now, you would step out of bed and you would also hurt because the muscles, because the joints are not used to the loading, are not used to the movement, are not used to the challenge. So you have to remember that your body can hurt when it's atrophying, when it's not being challenged enough, and it can hurt when it's suddenly being challenged to do more than it's used to. That can be a difficult thing to navigate because you're gonna feel discomfort whether you're resting or whether you're moving, but remember that just rest will never, ever make you stronger. That's why I say don't get caught in rips. Rest, ice, injections, pills, and surgery. Rest, ice, injections, and pills. Just try to ignore or numb the pain and hope that it goes away. But if the pain is from atrophy, it's not gonna work. And you're gonna have to just keep amplifying what you're doing and taking more pills and doing more injections to hope that the pain stops. But it won't stop until you address the lack of movement. And surgeries, unfortunately, are not subject to rigorous scientific trials. And the ones that have been, have been dismal performers when compared against placebo. I've got a video on that that I'll link to in the description box and up above. So Lauren and anybody else watching, I hope this video helps you understand how to sit without hip pain. I hope it helps you out big time in understanding how to develop your body for the long run. If you want to rebuild your hips at home, go to uprighthealth.com DIY and find a program that's going to work for you. For more free videos to help you with your hips, check these out here. Support this channel by using the donation links you'll find in the description box. Like, share, and subscribe with the bell notification on. And as always, I hope you remember that pain sucks. Life shouldn't.